because I know some or most are on mute. Uh, so we thank God for each and every one uh, that's joining us on tonight, whether you're joining us by YouTube or you're joining us by Facebook um, or you're on Zoom. So we thank God for each and every one of you um, on tonight. We give God the glory, honor, and praise for you, you and you. Uh, for those who do not know, um, here at the Tabernacle, the month of May um, is where we focus in on the family. All right. We focus in on the family for the whole month of May. And we uh, take out time to deal with every aspect of the family. All right. Because one of the situations or uh, one of the problems that we have in church is where uh, so many times uh, we get so focused in on uh, winning the loss at any cost, but we end up losing our family at the cost of winning the loss. Wow, that was a mouthful, but that one was really good. Uh, you know, what's the point in saving the whole world when I lose uh, my child that's sleeping right next to me? in the room right next to me. Uh, what's the point in winning all the other men, all right, but my own husband, all right, is uh, going to hell in the handbasket, all right? What's the point in, you know, going and, and ministering to and, and helping all the other sisters, but I'm not doing what is necessary as a man, all right, to help my wife, to help my sister out? You know, it makes absolutely no sense, all right? And even as we have stated on many occasions, um, a lot of people who are saved, um, the reason why uh, the person has not come to, all right, or given their life to the Lord is not because they don't want to, is because of the poor example, all right, that we have set, but also because of us sitting up there uh, doing everything else, all right, but spending that time with our family, all right, because life for a lot of us as saints of God has gotten out of balance. We don't live a balanced life. Either one or two things happen. Either we're in church way too much or uh, we're not in church enough. All right, one of the two. And we have to balance that out, all right? Um, because like we stated, what's the point in saving everyone else and losing our own family, all right? So uh, on Sunday, well, we thank God that we uh, started uh, off this month, and we were dealing with the men. We were dealing with the men, all right, because as the head of the household, all right, men, we are, like they say, we are in charge, all right, especially when you are the head of the household. You are the uh, main one that God holds responsible for what's going on in that household, and everyone else is supposed to come and support and to push, all right, but one of the sad parts about it is a lot of us men, we don't uh, step up and do what is necessary, all right? Because of situations that have happened in our present, all right, in our near past, and even in our distant past. Those things that have happened then have caused us, all right, to step back or to step down or to step away from what God has called for us to do as a man. And so now is the time for us, all right, as people of God, as men of God, to step up and do what is necessary, because a lot of us don't realize that what is in us, all right, is what God actually needs, all right? And what's in us sometimes is exactly what somebody else needs, all right? You may think as a man, or you may think as um, some of the men that are in your life, all right, my sisters, that, you know, you may discount them. All right, may marginalize them, may not think that there's really anything in them. But as we have been stating over months now, even years, that there are treasures in earthen vessels. All right, we can't get so caught up on the outside that we miss the gem, we miss the diamond that's on the inside. All right, so with that much being stated and that much of an introduction, um, I want us uh, to take the time out and look at as we continue uh, from Sunday, all right, on tonight, all right, uh, because uh, tonight's lesson is, it starts with you. It starts with you. That's the title of the lesson on tonight. Now, I'm not sure how many brothers are watching on YouTube or how many brothers will come back in later on, uh, but 
Uh, we dealing with the brothers again on tonight. We dealing with the brothers again on tonight. And let me encourage the system because sometimes in order for you to be able to work with a brother, you have to be able to understand a brother. All right. You have to understand where they're coming from, how they're thinking, why they're thinking, what they're thinking. Even flip it again. You know, brothers, it's the same exact way. In order to understand a woman, you got to you got to get an understanding. You got to be able to hear lessons that are geared towards women so that it will give you a better understanding of how to relate to. All right. And deal with. All right. So on tonight, uh, we're going back to Genesis. All right, Genesis chapter number. Uh oh, I just got a report that I'm frozen. If somebody could come off a mute and confirm that I'm frozen. Not to us. Okay. No. Thank you very much. I hear you, Pastor. Yeah, yeah you're right. on there for me. Okay, great. Great. All right, Genesis chapter number 32. Uh, verses 17 to 20. All right. Again, that's Genesis chapter number 32, verses 17 to 20. Um, and it reads on this wise, and it will come up on the screen. Uh, and he commanded the foremost, saying, When Esau, my brother, meeteth thee and asketh thee, saying, Whose art thou? And whether goest thou? And whose art there before thee? Then uh, let me just let you know, this is Jacob. Jacob is talking here and he's telling his uh, people, he's saying this, then thou shalt say, they be thy servant, Jacob. It is a present unto my Lord Esau. And behold, also he is behind us. And so commanded he the second and the third and all that followed the drove saying, on this manner shall ye speak unto Esau when ye find him. And verse 28, and say ye moreover, behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goeth before me. And afterward, I will see his face per adventure or per adventure, meaning perhaps he will accept of me. All right. And again, that is Genesis chapter 32, verses 17 to 20. Now, before we even get into those verses, let me ask this question. All right. And the question is this. Is it possible to lead without a vision? All right. Without a heading, without a plan or without direction? And I need you to support your answer. And let me read that question again. Is it possible to lead without a vision, without a heading, without a plan, or without direction? Please support your answer. So come on off of mute, somebody. And let's dig at this question. Is it possible? Pastor, I don't think so. Okay. Because well, if, you lead, if you're leading without a plan or following some instructions, then you're leading to disaster. Uh-huh. I, I say, too, if you have not a plan, no direction, you're just taking a walk. Where are you going? How can you lead the people if you don't know where you're going? Mm -hmm. So you have, to, you have to have a plan. You just take it a walk what, around the corner. You know, they, they're confused, you're confused. So what can you say? We're going to go from here. Where's your designation? I'm going to go here. We go. You have nothing to tell them. So, you know, you're leading the blind, the blind leading the blind. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not possible just to jump in a car or just take people and just go somewhere just to go. <laughs> And don't have a plan of action, just shoot from the hip. Unless you just want to take a ride to see the you want to take a ride and see the area. <laughs> you, you, want to, you, you want to see that. the scenery. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you can do that. Uh -huh. but, but what is the goal? Mm. Okay. All right. Now that's 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 the real that's the real crux of the matter. Is there a goal in mind? Is there a destination in mind? Someone else. Is it possible? Oh, let me ask the companion question. Have anybody, and I know most of us have, has anybody ever remembered part of um, the directions, but didn't remember all of directions? Oh, yeah. And have you ever started out that way? Yes, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And I've gotten lost every single time. <laughs> Say that again. Don't you just just said, uh, write the time. vision and make it plain. Isn't it? Don't isn't it the scripture that says write the vision and make it plain? So if you don't have the vision, you can't write nothing. So true, true, true. All right. Someone else. Wouldn't that also mean that you don't have any faith in the one that's guiding you? Without a vision, you have nothing. Mm -hmm. If God is guiding you and he's the one that's directing you, you should have a vision. But if you don't have one, then yeah, you have nothing. Mm -hmm. no question. How do you get how do you get a vision? How do you get a plan? How do you get a heading? How do you prayer. get direction? Prayer. You start with prayer. Yeah, but you gotta talk to God first. first. Yes. By God. submitting, by you submitting, by, God. by asking him to help. Mm, that's good. I see yourself daily. daily. Oh. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyone else has something that they want to add? Yes. Um, when you first of all, you can't lead anybody and you don't have a goal, you don't have no direction, you don't have any leadership. It'd be like the blind leading the blind everybody will get lost when you um it's the same somewhat when you're setting up a meeting when you're setting up a meeting and you're calling a meeting when you come to that meeting you don't come to the meeting and say okay so what y'all want to talk about so what y'all want to do you're calling the meeting so you should have some goals and stuff right. written down mm. already and then you can invite the people with their ideas but like um mother Schuler said it says, um, write the vision and make it plain. Yes. Mm -hmm. Without a vision, the people perish. That's right. the, you got to know, if you're leading somebody, you have to know what direction you plan on taking them in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everybody has to have an understanding, okay, what? where are we going? So we know how to follow. If we don't know what's going on, how are we supposed to follow? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Anyone else? Yeah. But Pastor, I got a answer and a question all in one. All but, right. So couldn't you actually move without a plan? Because it brings me back to one of our Friday night lives with Bishop Hamilton, I think, when he says sometimes God's not gonna give you a plan. He just needs you to take that step forward just to move because you're in a comfortable position and you're not moving, you're staying stagnant. So if you're just told to move, you're always not going to give, God's not going to always give you that direction right then and there. He just wants you to move. So isn't that kind of the same thing? You can move without a plan. You'll get the plan as you go, but the willingness to move without knowing, because he said something about, you're not going to always ask God for directions like God first, tell me where I'm going to go left, right first before I move. Sometimes you just have to move. Mm -hmm. And that's and, and what you're alluding to is is two different rules of thumb. Yes, yes, yes. Because that would be yes. moving by faith. It's, it's two different. Yes, it's two different rules of thumb there. Because, like you said, God has the direction, and He wants to see. And you answered your own question, Desi. Because God wants to see whether or not you you will believe, all right, and you will step out on faith. Because sometimes, like we've stated on many occasions, sometimes uh, for those who are controlling, they want to have, and especially since we're dealing with men, all right, we want to know point A, 
point B, point C, D, E, F, G, the whole thing. We don't just want to know A, nah. And we, we got to know, we got to know A, if there's an A.2 or an A.5, you know, then we want to know what's A.5. We want to know if there's B, then we want to know how we going to do the B. But there are times, as you had alluded to, there are times when God wants to see our willingness to believe and to trust him. All right. Will we step out on faith and will we believe him and do what he says to do without all right, without having any heading, without having any direction, because all of our direction is going to come from him. And we have to make sure our spiritual ears and our spiritual eyes are open so that when he moves, we move. Because, oh, think about it. Look at it. God told them, I'm going to take you to a land filled with milk and honey. He ain't tell them how they was going to get there. They knew they was going to walk. They didn't have a GPS. They didn't have a roadmap. They just had to follow the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. That's same exact thing. Moses knew that they were going someplace. He, God had already told them that he was taking them to the promised land. But God was the one that had to give them the direction. And they were the ones that had to step out and believe. Anyone else has something that they want to add or a point that they thought about? Or something that came to mind. Pastor, wasn't Desi talk that was mixed in with your personal walk, what she was talking about, Bishop um was talking about. Um some of that it, that was kind of mixed in with your personal walk with God and your personal faith with God. But you're talking about as a leader, we 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 in two different categories. I think yeah. that was. Yes, but it also can um, be used for both because sometimes a church can hold up or a ministry can hold itself up because God tells you, tells the leader to move, but the deacon board is like a oh, pastor. We ain't moving. You, we, we, all know, we all know what's going on. You know, sometimes like that, it can be either or. It can be personal or it can be corporate. But even in the question, it's the same exact thing. You know, it goes both ways. It goes both ways because realistically, as a leader, as it was already stated, as a leader, all right, you should have a vision for the house. You should have a vision for your own personal house. All right. You should have goals in mind. You should have plans in mind. You should have things in place to help accomplish that goal. All right. And to do what needs to be done, you should have your spiritual ears cleaned out. All right. And like we said, you should have your eyes open so that you can see and hear. All right. God, when he tells you to move so that you can move exactly when he tells you to move. And there's no hesitation. There's no questioning. But if you are the head of the household. All right. As the man. All right. Since we're dealing with men and you don't have any direction, you don't have a plan, then you're going to best just really, like they said, you're just going to be going by yourself. You're going to be going on a walk and you're going to be wondering why isn't my, or why will my family or why is my family not supporting me? Why, why do they not have my back? Why do I, you know, why do I have to, why do I'm doing this? Why I'm saying this, why I'm doing is because you have no plan. You have no direction. You got to have a plan. You got to have a direction. And as Mother Shula had already stated, and Elder Bebop had backed it up, uh, the people perish. All right? If there's no vision and you don't make it plain, listen, your family going to perish. you just going to be, like they say, you're just going to be on the walk. You're just going to go on the walk. But you have to have a plan. You have to have a vision. You have to have things in mind, goals in mind for your family, for the ministry, all right, even for yourself, all right, things that you want to accomplish. And let me ask this next question, which is this, if it was not instilled in you, how can you do it? And I'm going to ask the question again, because sometimes, let me put it plainly, 
before anybody gets a chance to answer. Sometimes it'll be used as a crutch. If it was not instilled in you, how can you do whatever it is? Or is it possible to do whatever it is if it hasn't been instilled in you? No, yes, it's very about- possible. I would say yes, it is very much possible because once you become grown, you become your own person. So it might not have been instilled in you, but there's always room for growth. It's always room to become your own woman or man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I, I, I don't think so. For the simple reason is that if God don't instill it in you to do the righteous, then the other one instills in you to do the unrighteous. So what are we talking about? The righteous or the unrighteous? Doesn't matter. Doesn't, thank you for whoever said it. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. As long, the the question, the the real, uh, like they say, the crux of the question is, if it was not instilled in you, how can you or can you do? Are you able to do it if it wasn't instilled in you? Whatever it is. You can see somebody else um, family or see somebody else making a plan, even though it wasn't instilled in you. And you can say, well, this is what I would like to have. Just like I call her my pretty girl, but Catrice was saying, um, you right, grown lady. now, and and, yes. and 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 sometimes you learn from other people, other examples. Come on, Come on and pull even at you it. learn, you learn in the church with the, like, Come on. Uh, you know, you learn from the other church member. You watch them. I learned from Deacon William when I got ready to retire. I watched him and I listened to him. Mm -hmm. And I prayed and asked for a plan. Mm -hmm. And everybody thought I had lost my mind. And a couple of times I started to derail from the plan. But I I knew, I kept telling myself, Brenda, God gave this to you. Go for it. Keep going for it. Don't don't sabotage your own self. Oh, sabotage. sabotage That's a good word. Don't sabotage your own self. So, we can learn from other people, even if it wasn't instilled in us. And sometimes having a plan can be a hindrance too, because you just worried about a plan. Yes, come on, say that again. You just worried about a plan, and sometimes you 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 don't you just you do what's right. You do what the Bible says, and we can't go wrong with that. We just can't. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, if there's a will, there's a way. Mm-hmm. So if you have the will to want to do it, you can do it, whether mm-hmm. it's good or bad. You, it's, what do you want to do? Do you want to do right and, and, and make a plan and start doing this? Well, then you're going to figure out a way. You can Google how to make a plan. It's are you going to sit down and Google it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have Google. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we didn't have we had an encyclopedia. We had to go look it up. <laughs> <laughs> go get encyclopedia Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> yeah, the books on the shelf. <laughs> yeah. But yes. Now, Pastor, I was thinking too that when you as you mature and as you lead your life, whatever you didn't get your morals or character to improve your character within the family. And, you know, just dealing with people in the society, you will, as you check yourself, as you look within yourself, you start to build your character the way you want to, what you know is right. Yeah. And, and, and shed that old stuff. So yeah. just a lot of looking into yourself, too, will help you yep. to uh, get where you want to do. Who pastor it. Yep. It, when we're born, isn't God, well, hasn't God already instilled in us everything we need to get through this life? We just have to dig deep and get it out because he's already given us everything we need. Mm-hmm. He, within us, there is a natural desire, a natural yearning for him within each and every one of us. 
It's just whether or not we will um, feed, all right, that desire, all right? It's just, it's, it's in us. We search, all right? We search for God. And if you think about it, you look at some people, um, what whatever they are in, and they are not saved, all right? Um, whatever field or profession that they are in, whatever it is, they had nobody and they are the first of their family to do it. And you talk about people that come, you know, um, they were on section eight. They were the ones who created the word ghetto, but they have surpassed what somebody else had put on them, even though what was instilled in them or what was modeled in front of them, they are no longer an image of that because their then does not match their now and it will not match their future because regardless, all right, of whether they are saved or not, they have made a determination in their mind that that was my then. This is my now. And my future is not going to be what my then was. So I'm going to push myself beyond what society, all right, has said that I should be. It's not going to happen that way. Yes, my dad used to test mattresses for Serta. Yes, my grandfather used to test mattresses for Postopedic. Yes, my great grandfather used to test mattresses for Sealy, but I'm not going to be a mattress tester. I'm going to decide and I'm going to make up in my mind that I'm not going to be a pimp player and a hustler, even though it was not instilled in me to be all right, a right, all right, good, solid. And I'm not talking about being saved at this particular point, but being a good, solid, faithful husband, a good, solid, faithful man. That's right. It was the determination within myself that I'm not going to do that. Because we can all learn good, all right, information, or we can make good decisions from watching bad examples. Now, to add on to that, when we get saved, God gives us, all right, what we need. He opens up our spirit and he opens up our mind even the more so that the plan that we have before we got saved, we give it to God. And God is like, listen, I got to take this out. I got to put this in. I got to maneuver this around and we got to uh, switch this out. I'll give you that for now, but I'm going to have to, you know, come back and we're going to tinker with it a little bit later. Minister Lionel, he put online, I believe you can lead, but your walk will be a long one and you will see it, but never attain it. I believe people have goals, but they have no plans to get there. So they live on God's grace. They live on God's grace. And so you've got to have a plan. And even if it's not instilled in you, listen, that's not an excuse. That's not an excuse because there are a ton of examples that can be used, all right, that can show and that we can look at, all right, and say, listen, I, I don't, I, listen, I may not be able to do all that they did, but that's an example unto me. I can, I can really, really pull from that. I could really pull from that. And when we get saved and God solidifies and empowers us even the more as a man, listen, there's no stopping us now. There is no stopping us now. Because especially when we start praying, so when we start praising, when we start worshiping God, oh yeah, there's no stopping a man then. There is no stopping a man then. Why? Because he knows what he wants. And he's not going to stop until he gets it. Any other questions or comments? Because I have another question to ask. I would say that some examples, um, we find out what not to do. Yeah. Say that again. We find out what not to do. Yep. Yeah. We definitely do. 
because we can look at them and say, nah, mm -mm, nope. And, and we can look at the uh, results of what they did. All right. And it's not that we're because I know we got some bougie people that will sit up there and look at this and say, judge not unless you be judged. No, we are not judging. We are just looking and seeing the fruit. We are looking and we're seeing the results of what happened. And since those were the results, mm -mm, I'm not doing what they did. I'm not doing what they did. That's like if you have multiple kids and the youngest one is looking at the older two getting in trouble all the time. The youngest one's like, I don't want to get beat like that. So I'm not going to do that. True. And that's kind of like how we look at other people. Like, wait a minute. If that happened to you and that was the consequence, I don't want to go down that path. Yeah. It was reverse for me. I, I was a troublemaker, always doing something. I was the baby. So uh, <laughs> they looked at me like, nah, Tree's wild and I don't know what she's doing, but um, I ain't doing that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. So let me ask this next question, which is very simple, not very, not very deep or hard or anything like that. The question is, why do we feel that what we did before will work now? Why do we feel that what we did before will work now? Why do we feel that if we repeat the same thing, it's going, it's the, the result is going to be different? Somebody come up a mutant and answer that question for me. I'm going to say from, oh. I'm going to say from what I've done before <laughs> um, and how I used to think was, okay, if I do it again, at least I know not to go that way. I'll try it a different way. And this time I'm outsmart what it was that I did. And I'm not going to do the same exact thing, but I'm going to do it in a smarter way. And it still ended up with the same result because you still did the same thing. So the mindset, it's, <laughs> you think you know more and you really don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Someone else. Someone else. Because I would say part of it, part of it is some of us are stubborn. Some of us are stubborn. And and we'll sit up there and sit up there and think that if, let me put it this way. If I take this water and the more I dump the water like this, that eventually the water going to come out. But in all honesty, the water is never going to come out. Or let me put it another way. You take the water bottle and keep hitting yourself upside the head, expecting it to break or expecting it to open up. After a while, it ain't going to do it. But for some odd reason, we want to keep doing the same exact thing, expecting different results. And it doesn't work that way. And so many times as men, we will do that same thing. We will sit up there and do the same thing or say the same thing. And we're expecting different results. And it's like, listen, if you did it once and it didn't work that time, why do you think if you go back and do it again, it's going to work this time? It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Does anybody have anything that they want to add, another point or something that they thought about? I would say maturity level. Um, mm. some maturity plays a part, big time. Um, and then you got some that just don't want to learn, period. But yeah. maturity will definitely take you further than acting like you don't know. And mm -hmm. you do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Because the first point that we have on the night is this. Stop trying and just do it. All right? That's all there is to it. Stop trying and just do. All right? Because if you look at it in verse 18, it says, Then thou shalt say, They be thy servants, Jacob. All right? It is a present sent unto my Lord Esau. What was Jacob trying to do with it? 
He was trying to manipulate. He was trying to uh, bamboozle. He was trying to hoodwink. He was trying to pull the wool over Esau's eyes. He was trying to kiss up to Esau and trying to get Esau, all right, to uh, not because Jacob was assuming that Esau was mad at him and that Esau was coming to kill him. That's what he was assuming. And that's what he was believing because he had taken the birthright. So he thought that his brother had it in for him. So he figured that if I put all this stuff out there in front of me, if I put all this out there and I sit up there and show him all that I've done, all that I've acquired, and I give this to him, don't that sound like a, a quid pro quo? You do for me, I'll do for you. Mm-hmm. Don't that sound like a quid pro quo? Uh-huh. You you give me this and, and I'll sit up there and do this for you. Same exact thing. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And so many times, as men, we will try to manipulate all right, the situation by doing some type of trickery. And it's like, listen, stop. Just, just honestly, just stop. In order to stop the curse, in order to destroy the curse of manipulation, you got to kill it at the root. You got to kill it at the root. In order to stop or destroy, all right, the pimp playing hustler, all right, that, that curse that's on your family, that's in your bloodline, you got to curse that thing at the root. In order to stop and destroy, all right, lazy, yellow back, yellow spine, men from not wanting to stand up and do what is necessary, you got to curse that thing at the root. And even sometimes, let me put it plainly, if your father is alive, if your grandfather is alive, the one that instilled in you, all right, the pimp player and hustler mentality, all right, because your mother will end up telling you, you acting just like your father. Or your wife will tell you, you acting just like your father. Or somebody that knows of your father's negative, all right, or positive tendencies. If they tell you and they're honest with you, you need to go back and you need to look at that thing. And there are some times when you will have to go to that person, that father, grandfather, great grandfather, whoever it is, the man at the barbershop, whoever it is. And you're going to end up having to tell them. It's like, listen, no disrespect, but you put some wrong stuff in me. You put and planted some wrong stuff in me and I'm going to get rid of it right here and right now. I know you helped raise me, but I'm going to get free of that right here and right now. Why? Because it ends here. It ends here. I'm not going to be lazy any longer. I'm not going to be a womanizer any longer. I'm not going to sit back and let everybody else do. And I just receive the benefits. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to do what is necessary. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to read the word of God. I'm going to get a vision. I'm going to go before the presence of God. I'm going to get in the presence of God. I'm going to minister to my family. I'm going to uphold every single thing that God has told me to do. And I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it well. Amen. Because it stops here and it stops now. And I'm not just going to try. I'm going to do it. You got to make up in your mind. You got to make up in your mind because as we have stated and we've all have seen it, that when you create space for a man to do something in ministry, when you give them purpose, when they feel like they have purpose, when they feel like they are a part and not just taking a part, oh, you got a, you got a brother right there that you created that one little cupcake 
but that cupcake is going to explode into a sheet cake. Why? Because he's going to keep adding to it. Because he's getting excited and he's becoming aggressive about what God is doing in him. And you started out as this one little simple thing, but all of a sudden, it's like it just ballooned into something even massive. Uh, let's use it, use cancer in a reverse uh, thing or a reverse sense. It's just like you gave him, all right, stage one cancer. You just created that little spot for him. He's just that little cancer spot right there. But it's a good cancer because now he's grabbing hold of and he's infecting. Oh, God, he's infecting all the other men that's around him and not only affecting the other men that's around him. He's affecting the other women that's around him. And not in a uh, and I have to put it in there. Not in a sexual sense, in a real manly, brotherly sense. And what ends up happening as she sees that, as the other men see that, they all begin to gravitate and they all begin to push. And they all begin. And that's how the men end up growing and flourishing. But it takes one, two, three, four of them to say this manipulation this lazy spirit, this pimp playing and hustling spirit, it ends here. It ends here and it ends now. I'm not more, I'm not perfect. I've got my flaws, I got my downfalls, but you know what? God is going to perfect me. He's going to perfect the things concerning me. He's going to do what needs to be done so that I can be the man that he has already declared that I am. So let's continue. But they also they also will feel wanted. Oh, say and, that again. And accepted. Say that again. They will always feel wanted and accepted. Mm-hmm. And why will they feel wanted and accepted? Because they see what they're doing is drawn, not even just drawing the people in, but they see even though they've been pimps, as you say, pimps players, that as they come into the house of the Lord that whatever they do is drawing other people in and what they're doing, whether it's praying, reading the scripture or whatever, it's, you know, it's making them feel, you know, once. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Included, and like you said, go ahead. Included and make them feel oh. included. Like you said, yeah. and that's a, it's a major difference. Right. Included. Yeah. Yes. That's a good one. You included and you feel wanted. Mm. Imagine what it's, oh God, coming from a man's perspective, imagine what it feels like when, all right, nobody ever wanted you. Nobody mm -hmm. ever included you. Your mother didn't want you. Your father always talked about you. But you come to church one Sunday, two Sundays, three Sundays, four uh, come to church for a whole month and then all of a sudden you got a new family that's looking for you every single Sunday imagine how that makes him feel you can come off of mute Smith and say that again <laughs> it'll make him feel like he's he's worth something he has purpose exactly 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 because if he has always been put down all of his life and it has not been instilled in him, Latrice, I see you, and it hasn't been instilled in him, but he wants to, he has a desire to, once that desire is being fed, oh my God, that's a beast. You're, right. turning, you're turning him into a beast. Go ahead, Trish. Right, and also it not only opened their heart and their mind up to the new family that they acquired, it'll open their heart and mind up to God too. Because for one, he has opened up a whole nother door for them that they never even imagined would be open because mm -hmm. they were not included. They felt like, you know, singled out. When you feel alone, it's a tough spot to come from. Yep. So I would say that right there is remarkable by itself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And that's why we say it. it's up to you. Yeah. It's up to it's not only it's not only the man 
but it's also everyone else that is around the men. And it starts, it's up to them, but it starts with them. And it starts with us individually and corporately. That's how they end up really pushing. That's how they end up really, really going at it. All right. And they'll so, stay. Okay, somebody else? And they'll stay. Yeah, they will stay. They will dig their heels in and they will they will do whatever needs to be done. That's that's what will happen. Because some of them sometimes feel like they always have to be in control. And as we stated on Sunday, for some, in order to be in control, you have to lose control. And for some men, all right, especially when you talk about they were the breadwinner. All right. They brought home the eggs, bacon, uh, the cow, the chickens, uh, you know, everything. And then all of a sudden now I got to sit up there and submit and ask God what to do with something ain't some don't add up because this my I work for this and now all of a sudden you got I gotta I gotta submit and answer the uh, and then you gotta oh man yes brothers yes submission goes both ways it's not only the sisters have to submit but us as brothers we have to submit we have to submit too. We can't always be in control of every single thing that's going on and every single thing that's happening. So let me ask this next question. Why don't we like to fess up? It's an easy question. Why don't we like to fess up? Somebody come off a of mute. Someone say well, that'd be a like form of weakness. Up. Say that again. Some would feel it's a form of weakness and mm. not a form of maturity and knowing who you are and who God created you to be, regardless. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. <laughs> not Someone confessing, else? not confessing, you're hiding something. And you don't want to be put in the spotlight. Mm. Okay. All right. Someone else? Not, not willing to be vulnerable. Not willing to be vulnerable. Okay. Someone else? Why don't we like to fess up? Some people... Uh, some people can't admit that they're wrong. Some people don't think they're ever wrong. Mm. <laughs> that's yeah, that's the major part right there. That's crazy. <laughs> mm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Sister uh Sister Williams put online on YouTube uh because of embarrassment. Mm. Because of embarrassment. And and uh I know I know one particular person will laugh at this. Uh they they admitted that there was only two times that they was wrong. <laughs> I was on a Zoom call. They admitted that they was only wrong. I think it was either two or three times that they was wrong. That was it. Other than that, there was two times. Thank you. Two times. Other than that, they was right. All right. Let's let's move on to the next move on to the next question. Unless somebody has something else that they want to say. Pastor, some people can't handle the truth. Mm. Yes. Like uh and they the won't do it for that reason. Mm-hmm. Yep, they can't handle the truth. Can't handle it. And they can't handle the truth. They can't handle the truth about themselves. They yep. can't handle the truth about the situation. All right. Someone else. Okay. Now, the next question is this. Why do we uh, like to explain, justify, and rationalize? Why do we like to justify, explain, and rationalize? Is there a purpose 
Is there a reason why we like to explain, justify, and rationalize? I don't know, Pastor, but I'm always doing it. <laughs> I don't know why I do it so just close the right out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Someone, else, someone else why do we why do we always feel like we have to explain why we have to justify at times it could be because we don't we trying to ease the blow on to who's receiving mm -hmm. hurt their feelings or make it seem like it's coming off a certain way but we actually mean exactly what we said mm-hmm yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Thank yeah. you for that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. All right, someone else. Why do we, why do we do that? Because <laughs> I know for some, they're like, I, I got to explain every single thing I do, every single answer I give. I got to justify why I said this. I got to justify why I said that. I got to rationalize. No, no. Sometimes it's better off if you just end up fessing up, all right, opening up your mouth, say what you did, and just leave it as that. That's, yeah. the, that's, that's the best way to go about it. Accept the consequences of what you have done. Because sometimes when you try to, all right, uh, justify, rationalize, and explain, you end up making it worse. You end up making it worse. And then on top of that, then you try to manipulate and you try to cover up. Because you just look at it right now with what's going on with the, with the January 6th um, investigation. All the stuff that's coming out about that. Listen, if you would just fess up and say what happened and what you did, listen, the consequences won't be as bad. Because for some of us uh, uh, who, <laughs> parents, you could raise your hand or whatever. Uh, wouldn't it be easier or the punishment would be not as harsh uh, for yeah. your child if they just yeah. fessed up and told the truth? Yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> I read out the Bebop's mouth. <laughs> she said, Hey, man. Mm hmm. It would. It would. I can't tell you how many. Go ahead, <laughs> Bebop. <laughs> yes, it would. I'm trying to get my guests in. I'm <laughs> pushing a button that went into all different screens. <laughs> yes, it would be easier. <laughs> Why would it be easier? But because nine times out of 10, the parent already know the answer. <laughs> the what? parent already know that you did it. So, <laughs> I sure whether, you, so whether you confess <laughs> or not, <laughs> when they get in line, you're going to get whooped the hardest. They, the parent know you did it. I can testify for that one right there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she knew I did it and she made sure I felt it too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you you got you got to because because the thing the thing about it is if you admit to it is I, I'll be honest with you I don't know and I wasn't doing it to get out of to say the punishment that I was going to receive from my parents but I knew that the more I just told on myself the better off I would be I, I just knew it. I, I just knew it. So after a while, it just became a part of who <laughs> I am. Yeah. Because yeah. I was like, I just, just, I just tell them, it's like, listen, I broke the, I broke the lamp. And they'd be like, all right, well, you broke the lamp. Okay. Are you okay? And I'm like, yes, I'm okay. All right. No problem. Even, and even now, even in being an adult, listen, something happens in ministry here at the church. Listen. I'll tell you right now, within 10 minutes or within two hours, definitely not 24 hours, Bishop is getting a text or he's getting a call as to what happened and how it happened. 
Why? Because it's one of them things. It's like, listen, I'd rather for you to hear from me. Amen. You know, and I'm not going to sit up there and um, uh, try to paint myself in a good light. No, I'm going to say what I said, how I said it, and why I said what I said. And whatever happens, that's what happens. I'm not yeah. going to sit up there and try to play any games. I'm not going to try to sit up there and, you know, curve it to make myself look. No, because if if I'm lying, and this goes for all of us, when the truth comes out, it's going to make you look even worse. Worse. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Uh, worse. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's a new word. <laughs> All right now. <laughs> Most definitely. You want to you you instill that in kids. I used to tell my kids, if you tell me the truth, the punishment might not be so bad. It depends on what it is. But if mm -hmm. you just stand up in front of me and just lie, you're going to get a punishment. Yep. And I used to say, stop practicing how to lie. Let's practice how to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because a kid, if you, I mean, they could be two years old and you said, did you touch that? They said, no, no, no I didn't touch it. You know, yep. so I, I say this, because the more you tell the truth, I believe like you, Pastor, the, the more the truth come out. Sometimes you tell too much truth and you get yourself in trouble for telling the truth and all that. Yeah, but yes, if do. you just used to telling the truth, you ain't going to think about lying. You're just going to tell the truth. And yep. it become, the truth becomes a part of you. It becomes yeah. a part of your character. And the people yes. around you can say, well, she tell the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so... Yeah. Even if it's about her, she tell the truth. Yeah. Amen. So, you know, I, you, to me, you just, hey, put the chips on the table and let them, let them flow. Just right. tell the truth. Like we said this morning, just play the numbers. <laughs> you got to stop that. <laughs> uh, mommy, go ahead. You know, and also, as he's saying, if you tell the truth, You'll just tell the truth. The same person could another person come and ask you the same question. You don't have it's to lie with a lie. You That's forgot true. that lie. So you got to tell another lie. And they'll go back and say, yeah. Well, you told me XYZ. And then you got to remember that lie. So why keep you having to go on and on? The truth is the truth. And I don't care how many people ask you, it's still the same. Yep. So it's just, Amen. Just, Amen. Yeah, you can't forget the truth. You can forget a lie. Yeah. Right, you can forget a line. You're you can, trying to remember right. what it was and how you said it. Right, and it, you, but you're going to forget that, that one word. word. You told me yeah. you did that yesterday, so they be yeah. lying. They yes. catch you with it every time. Yes, yeah. I used that's to be what one Judge one. Judy said. Judge yeah. Judy said. She said, "If you tell the truth, you won't have to be all fumbling with your words that's and everything, right. and you that's won't forget right. us. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come out the same way. That's every right." Time. That's, I well, used to be one. That's on right. Zoom. That's right. <laughs> I used to be one. That's right. <laughs> I knew how to lie. <laughs> but, hmm. that, but that's why we say, as brothers, listen, yeah. you, you, got to, you got to tell the truth. Yes. Yeah. You, you got to tell the truth. <laughs> it's, it's the easiest, it's the <laughs> easiest, all right, and best thing in the world is just listen. Because our second and final point is this. Game recognizes game. Mm -hmm. Game recognizes game. Because if you look at it in verse four, it says, and Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. That was not what Jacob was expecting. Jacob was not expecting that. And then you go on to verse eight through 10 and it states this. And he said, what meanest thou by all this drove which I met? Meaning, what in the world you putting all this stuff out there in front of me for? You got this, you got camel out there, you got this out there, you got that out there. Why are you putting all that out there? And then it goes on to say, and he said, these are to find grace in the sight of my Lord. And Esau said, I have, I have enough, my brother, keep that thou hast unto thyself. And Jacob said, nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present 
at my hand. Look at it. Jacob was still trying to manipulate. He was still trying to control. Instead of just accepting the grace that Esau was giving him. That's what he was doing. He just wanted to say, well, let me just flip it this way. Let me just do it this way. Uh, let me do it that way. Because he realized there was, and Minister Lionel, I see you, there was a ripple effect. And so uh, I need you to come off a of mute and drop that ripple effect on us. Because I remembered. Oh, snap. <laughs> But in that last point you was given, you look at Jacob, as people would try to say, I'm going to pay my way because I don't want no strings attached. Mm -hmm. So if I just let you just forgive me, I don't know when this might come back and this might come up. But if I pay you, hey, look, bro, I paid you. I paid my debt. I, there ain't no strings attached. But when we were talking about the other night, when we looked at um, from a man's perspective, uh, sometimes why they don't fess up and why they don't um, they don't um, go back and and right the wrongs that they that they have done. And even sometimes when they do go back to right the wrongs that they that they have done, they don't right the wrong from all the side effects. And mm -hmm. what I used is if you take a stone and you go to a lake and you throw that stone into the lake, the Got stone it, is going to crash in one spot. But the mm -hmm. ripple effect that comes from that stone goes into a 360 degree direction and it mm -hmm. ripples out. Yep. Now I have that stone is my wrong. The ripple mm -hmm. effects are the effects of the all the people that that wrong have hurt. Come on. I now. have gone back to that original stone, that original person, and I got it right with that original person. And then I left all the ripple effect people out. Mm -hmm. What is an example? I'm a um a deadbeat father. Mm -hmm. Got kids out there. Yeah. I go back to the woman who I was a deadbeat father with. And I got it right with her by paying out my child support. Mm -hmm. I don't have no contact with none of those kids. Yep. I didn't seek any relationship or try to fix a relationship or even try to give, give um, or either try to um, apologize to them to see if they would even be willing to give me a chance to start a relationship. I just allowed those, those other effects to just go. Yep. So sometimes, yes, you can confess it and you can go get it right, but you forget that stings are like dominoes. When mm -hmm. dominoes fall down, you can't pick the last one up and think it's going to pick all of the rest of them up. And you can't go back and pick the first one up and think that you can knock the first one and all of them going to fall down again. They're already down. Yep. Yep. So sometimes we look at it as we look at the trail and sometimes it's hard to deal with certain things because of the trail that it, that, that comes with it. So sometimes as men that has, that's been hurting and then they finally get healed, they just look at the trail and they just say, well, I can't fix all this. And they just don't, they don't even attempt it. Because it's so much ripple effect, it's so much trail, it's so much damage that has been left in the wake that they was like, they just throw their hands up, and like you're doing, they just shake their head, and they're just like, I, I can't do it. And, a lot and, of times, a lot of times, ahead. people don't even realize from a man perspective, and just using the example of women and kids. A lot of men get in their way of, of not taking care of their kids simply because they fell out of love with the woman and they don't love that woman anymore. And then their hatred builds up so much for that woman that anything that they do for their kids is still helping the woman in their mind. So because that is the mindset that they have at that moment, whatever I do, 
for my child that lives with you is doing it for you. And I hate you. I don't like you. I don't want to do nothing for you. I don't want you to benefit nothing that I have for you that all my kids that I have with you are going to feel that ripple effect because I'm no longer with you. I don't want to give you nothing. I don't want to help your life. I don't want you to prosper with my money. So I'm not giving you nothing. And the kids suffer for it because the stone was thrown that I don't like this woman. That's why we're separated. That's why I'm going my way. And anything I do for my kids is helping you. And I don't like you. So I'm not going to help you, which is going to hurt them. Yep. And see, the Lord brings back to your remembrance. Because I know I caught you completely off guard. See? See? But... That's a lot of bitterness, a lot of bitterness. Yes, that's a lot of bitterness. It's a lot of anger. It is. And and the thing that we have to realize is, like we said, it starts with us. It starts with us as a man. That whole thing with Jacob, it started with him. Because if he would have, imagine if it would have been reversed where he would have been the first in line and then had everything else behind him that would have spoke volume to Esau because what you putting every you putting everything else in front and uh you know next thing you know uh you're the last one that is not uh, doing or saying much about you as a man. That's almost making you seem like you a wimp. Because a real man is going to be the one that's out there in the front. The real man is going to be the real one that stands and does what needs to be done to protect everybody else. That's what, that's what a real man does. Because I'll be honest with you. You, you, in the, you, you know, you in the house or you in church, you know, or you in some place, and next thing you know, somebody's coming in to do harm. A real man's not going to be the one that's running out the back door. A real man's going to be the one that's going right to the front to make sure that nobody else is getting hurt. That's what's going to happen. That's what will happen. That's what a real man does. Why? Because it starts with him. All of this, as Minister Lanell was putting it, is a ripple effect of Jacob not doing what he was supposed to do. And there's more to it because he did not do what needed to be done as far as it's dealing with the birthright. And he was manipulating. He was manipulating throughout the whole thing. And he wanted to try to control the narrative. He wanted to try to change you know, and 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 appease and, and do all that. And it's like, no, Jacob, all you have to do is just fess up. That's all you have to do because it started with him. And even in the church, it starts with the men. It starts with the men in the church. And my sisters, to encourage you, if you want to do less in ministry and not have to carry so much of the burden, encourage the men. Push the men, not push them, push them, nudge them, encourage them. Create, allow the space to be created so that they can step up. And as they step up and they will step up and some of them have already stepped up, that means you can step back and you don't have to carry the weight as much as you have been carrying it before. Because sisters, you have been carrying too much of the weight of the church and too much weight of your household. You've been carrying too much of it. Allow him to step forward. And as we continue to encourage him, as we continue to build them up, they will do exactly that. And as I stated on many occasions, be that cheerleader. Be that cheerleader. Be that cheerleader and continue to cheer him on and watch what God does in him. Watch what God does to him because he's not just going to be sitting back, clapping his hands like this. He's not just going to be sitting back, you know, patting his foot and you can't even see it. Nah, 
He going to be up giving God the glory. He going to be up giving God the honor. And you know what? You're going to end up finding him up in the midnight hour praying for you. You're going to end up finding him at the church before you get to church. You're going to end up finding him, you know, uh, praying in church when some won't even pray in church because it's on live stream. But he's going to be up there praying because he don't care. He know how good God's been. When somebody asks him something because he knows how good God is to him, he's going to step up and he's going to go ahead and do it. Don't even care. Won't care. Won't even say no. Why? Because he knows it starts with him. So brothers, continue to keep pushing. No matter when you're watching this, no matter what time you're watching this, keep pushing, keep praying, keep striving because it starts with you. And once it starts with you and God has a hold of you and you have a hold of him, watch out. Watch out. You're going to be a bad brother. You're going to be a bad brother. Because God got great things in store for you. He got great things that's coming through you. He got great things in you. It's just going to be pulled out of you. With that much being stated, does anybody have any questions, comments? Because I know we went beyond our time, but I don't mind. Because this is relevant and this is important. All right. So with that much being stated, my name is Pastor Lamont Brown. I'm the pastor of... Faith Baptist Tabernacle here in Asbury Park, New Jersey, where we are evangelizing to the family while building the disciples.